Bible study so that people really appreciate God. They really like God. They, uh, they see how precious God is and then they will want to follow God. So that's the purpose of this Bible study method. Okay, and um, now last time we have talked about uh, why is it important? Uh, because many people just teach by telling people uh, what you should do, what you have not done well, and, and repent and follow God and obey God. Then it's like just telling people what to do. It's like uh, a parent telling the children what to do. And when we are preaching or doing Bible study, we're not just telling people what to do, we're telling them how wonderful God is so that people would be attracted by God. So that people would be drawn by Him and that they like Him. When they like God and then they will, uh, when they like God, uh, then they will um, want to follow God and they want to enjoy God and want to obey God. Okay? Now, please let me know if you can see me. Okay? Okay, now, uh, I, um, last time we talked about uh, a, a number of things, and today I'll talk about the outline, a, a common outline that we can use for many messages. Now, you can have other outlines, but this is just one outline that uh, it's, then it's easier for us to prepare. Um, Okay, there are different ways to write outlines for sermons. Here is one outline I often use. Using the same title, we'll use a title, Christians Should Love One Another. So if the theme is, Christians Should Love One Another, the first part would be people's problems. Now, why do we start with people's problems? It's to let people know people are not following God in this way, and then what problem it would cause uh, so to wake people up. Now it can be some other ways to introduce, uh, but this is one way to let people know even though uh, Jesus told us to love one another, but many Christians don't love one another. And also many people don't want to believe in Jesus because they saw that Christians uh, don't have love. Okay, so Christians who don't love one others and how they create negative influences. Okay, now someone asked me where to watch. I have already sent you a link and you always look for Global Fire Missions Ministry. It's always there. Okay, now, so the first part is people's problems and then the second part is God's nature. God loves us greatly even when we disobey Him. He continues to move us to repentance. He also gives us the ability to love. So God's nature related to this topic, that God loves us greatly even when we disobey Him. He cares about us. He works in our life. He helps us uh, uh, spiritually and He helps us physically. And he continues to move us to repentance. He continues to move us to repentance and love him. He also gives us the ability to love. He gives us the ability to love and also the anointing to love. So all uh, God's nature and his grace related to this topic. Christians should love one another. And then why many Christians don't love people? So what are the hindrances? And then how to overcome our hindrances and start to love Christians more and practical way to love. How we can overcome this hindrance and start to love Christians. And then challenge people to love each other more. Okay. Now I use this topic to demonstrate, you, uh, demonstrate to you how to use this. So I'm going to preach a short message using this. Christians should love one another. That Jesus told us, love one, one another as I have loved you. And people know that you are my disciples when you love one another. So um, if I uh, want to talk about this, a, a message about this. So people's problem will be, you know, Christians are supposed to love one another. But it's a fact that many Christians go to church and they just want someone to care about them, to love them. 
I've seen many Christians they complain why don't other Christians love me but they don't care about other people and also sometimes Christians will criticize other Christians and and uh, they say well they don't love God enough you know when we see other people who don't love God enough we don't criticize but we want to guide that person to love God more to see God's love to uh, to change them we don't just criticize them and say I don't want to mingle with them I don't want to talk to them I don't want to care about them because they don't love other people so many Christians have a critical spirit they want to criticize other people and they uh, uh, give pressure to people uh, and they don't show much love and that causes many problems and many churches don't grow because in the church is just formality people just follow ways you know of worship that they have been doing and when newcomers come in they don't care about them now I have uh, trained many Christians I, I told them when people come in please welcome them and talk to them and then uh, they listen to me and then they you know uh, they heard me but they don't necessarily obey me and then and then uh, sometimes I just tell them please go and greet this person and then they just go and say hi and then they don't know what to do or they don't have the motivation to continue and then they go back to the other Christians and just mingle with the other Christians so this is something we need to learn we need to learn to have the motivation to have compassion on people and love people and next we need to learn how to relate to people how to welcome people how to care about them and it's to listen to people and and understand people all have needs and problem and we welcome them and and we could ask them uh, welcome and uh, uh, I'm happy to see you here is there something I can do to help you is there anything I can let you know about Jesus so we can do different things or we can ask them uh, uh, do you know much about Jesus do you want to know more about him so to care about people but people don't have this concern for people and so why and that's why many churches have weaknesses and they don't grow much because people don't people most people don't help uh, welcome other people they just wait for the pastors and the leaders to welcome people and they don't themselves uh, welcome other people and show love to other people they just come to listen to a message and to participate in the worship many people go to church just to get something instead of giving something for God okay and then God's nature uh, he loves us greatly so he he cares about us each person no matter how weak we are how disobedient we are God still care about us and he want to move in our heart uh, he want you know he draw us to him to believe in Jesus he move in our heart to uh, he moves in our heart to draw us to follow him and change our life and he gives love to people many people when they believe in Jesus or when they worship God they experience peace and God uh, and love from God and they say this is wonderful but many Christians just enjoy it when we see God's love showing through uh, you know when we worship him when God's love comes to us we should say God you're so wonderful I want to love people as you love me and even when, when many Christians uh, turn away from God God still moves them to come back God is patient with them God doesn't you know uh, just reject them when they turn away from God God continues to move in the heart and that's what's wonderful about God he's always moves us to come close to him and then he also give us the motivation to love other people okay and then okay so God is such a God he cares about people and he moves us to love one another one uh, one another why many Christians don't love people so what are the problems now when we see these problems then we can uh, try to find a solution one big problem is people have not grown up loving people and many people have not been loved by other people so many people have not experienced much love from people so they don't know how to love people they don't know how to care about people they don't know how to uh, show concern to people so that's why 
many people don't love other people. And then other reasons is that uh, many people are just self-centered. They care about themselves. They don't care about other people. Uh, they just want something. They want to get something. And also many Christians, another reason, you know, first reason, uh, it's up to you how many reasons you want to list. One reason, the first reason was that uh, Christians, many Christians have not learned to love. They have, they, in the whole lifetime, they just, uh, they just don't care about people. They don't care much. And then when, when they become a Christian, they still uh, don't change. And the second reason is many people are lazy. Uh, they don't have the motivation. They just want to get something for themselves. And then another, another reason is that many Christians um, they, uh, they have a lot of hurt experiences, hurtful experiences from the past. They have a lot of hurts. And they just look at the hurts and they say, I have been hurt too much. I, I cannot love people. I have no strength. So these people need to be healed. And after they're healed, then they should learn to love other people. But many people, when they experience healing, praying, they just want to be healed more. They just want the pastor to keep praying for them so that they get he healed more. So, and then, so they just become self-centered. So the reason why many Christians cannot love because they, they need healing themselves or they are under a lot of pressure. They have been living under the law instead of under the love of God. Now we have talked about this, how to live under God's love. Because God cares about us. When, when we experience God, when we experience His peace and love, we will say, God, you're so wonderful. I want to praise you and worship you. I want to respond to you. Whenever I respond to you, you're very happy. Then we can have strength when we see the love of God. When we see that God is giving us love, then we have strength and motivation to serve God. But many Christians don't see that. Many Christians... Uh, they just look at themselves and they don't see, uh, they don't see that uh, they need to help other people. Other people need help, okay? So there are more reasons too, you know, sometimes maybe Christians, they enjoy the fellowship of each other more. And then the newcomers, they, you know, it's hard, you know, it's, it, sometimes it's, it takes a little effort to care about newcomers. So they, they take work, it takes work, so they don't, they don't want to work on it. And also another reason is people have not learned, people have not learned to love one another. Okay? So how to overcome our hindrances and start to love Christians more and practical ways to love. So how can we overcome our hindrances? First, we need to come to God with repentance and say, Lord, you have loved me so much. You have loved me so much. You have loved me in so many ways. You have drawn me to come to you. You have given me eternal life. You have given me joy and love when I worship you and pray to you. You are so wonderful. Then we'll say, God, you're so wonderful. I love you. I worship you. So the first thing is that we repent. And then the next thing is we come to God to worship Him and to think about God's love. When we experience His peace and joy. We say, God, you're so wonderful. You're full of love. You're full of care. And I want to be changed by you and love other people. So when we praise and worship, then we, then we uh, experience more of His love that we can share with people. Another way how we can have more, uh, more love is that we read the Bible and we see that God uh, desires uh, passion, Compassion. He wants us to have compassion on people. And God is happy even when we give a cup of cold water to a little one in His name. God is very happy with us. So that's another motivation for Christians to love one another. Because when we love one another, God is very happy with us. God is happy to bless us. And then also uh, how is to think about the needs of the people. The newcomers, when they come to church, they don't know anyone, they will feel lonely. So when we feel the feeling, when we talk to them more, we understand their feelings. And then we, we want to comfort them and let them experience God's love. And also when we see people changed, and then we have more motivation to change more people. When we help people and then we see them change, we want to, uh, want to 
uh, help more people so that they also will experience the love and joy. So there are different ways how we can uh, help people to love God more. And also another way is from the perspective of a pastor that he will teach about loving people and he will lead the people to welcome the people and lead the people to say words of greeting and blessings to each other. So tell them to greet each other, welcome each other, love each one another, pray for one another. So encourage the people to care for people. So these are ways and there could be more ways. And then challenge. Challenge will be saying, so now you know that God is very happy when we love one another and care about people. Do you want to start doing that? Is it so difficult? Can you start to do that? So it's encouraging people to start to love people. Okay, so I hope you understand this simple outline. And when you have this simple outline, now, of course you can use other outlines. And with this simple outline, we will be talking to the specific needs of people. We will be talking to people how to overcome this spe specific problem and how to overcome the problem. So people's problem, they don't learn to love and they don't care about each other sometimes and God's nature is He's a loving God and He gives love to people and then why many people, many Christians don't love people and then how to develop love and challenge to people to develop love. So for the whole message, it's all about encouraging and training people to love God more, love each other more, okay? So this is a common outline which I use many times. So people's problems, God's nature are related to this area and then why many Christians don't follow that and then how and then challenge, okay? And I encourage you to um, to write messages to me and I can correct and I can respond to you. Do your homework. When you do your homework well and after a period of time, I can give you a certificate only to those who do the homework, okay? Okay, now, here we we'll still talk about some qualities that we want to put into messages. It's best that a sermon has a clear and narrow theme. A clear theme. For instance, just now we say we want to encourage the people to love one another. And narrow theme. Narrow theme means, uh, now a wide theme means just to love. You know, we want to love. So love can mean can mean loving Christians, loving non-Christians, loving your spouse, loving people of the world. So there could be different kinds of love. And we want to narrow it down. If we talk about love in general, then it's too much to cover. And then we won't have enough time to talk about narrow down to one area. So we want to narrow down to one area so that uh, people remember what they have heard on that day. Uh, they remember, we've talked about loving each other, Christians loving each other, and how can we motivate Christians to love one another. So, so we want to narrow down to that area, and also, um, now it's better to choose which aspect of God's love we want to talk about. Uh, for instance, if we talk about God's love, we can choose to talk about love of His salvation, how He saved people. That you know, the way He saved people, His plan of salvation shows His love. And love of acceptance, how God accepts Zacchaeus, how God accepts uh, uh, the, um, like Matthew, uh, he was a, uh, a tax collector, and how Jesus accepts him. And also how Jesus accepts the, the woman uh, with the 12 year bleeding. So. We want to narrow down, if we talk about love of acceptance, then we encourage people to accept people, even when they are weak, even when they have problems. We, want, we still want to accept them, even though they are weak, even though they might be disobeying God. But still, God wants to accept them. God wants to love them so that they will turn to God. Why do people need salvation? Because they don't love God, they don't want to follow God. So when they don't follow God, we want to accept the condition and we want to help them to understand God's love so that they will follow God. 
So, and then we can have the love of forgiveness. How Jesus forgave uh, Peter after he denied him three times, Jesus still forgive us. And very often we are, you know, we have sinned, and then we feel very guilty, and then we uh, we are afraid God may not forgive us. So uh, it's important to talk about God's uh, love of forgiveness. Then the whole message is about forgiveness. It's about the God's love shown in forgiveness. Why? People can't believe that they are forgiven by God. And how we can believe that God is loving us when He forgives us. And when we experience His forgiveness, when we feel peace, when we ask for forgiveness and we feel peace, that means God is forgiving us. And how we can appreciate God and say it's wonderful to be forgiven. And then we want to forgive other people. So. If we want to talk about the love of God or forgiveness, then we narrow it down to forgiveness. And then caring love, caring for people, caring for people who are needy, who are unhappy, who are poor, then we want to narrow it down to this kind of love. So we want, we, when we preach about something, we want to narrow it down to one area. And then people can remember, if we just talk about love in general, it's too broad. Then you cannot talk in detail about the love of acceptance or the love of forgiveness or the love of salvation and the caring love. We want to narrow down so that people can remember to uh, love and forgive people. If we are talking about love of forgiveness and thank God that He forgives us, that shows His love. So we want to uh, we appreciate God for forgiving us. And we thank God for forgiving us and we know that we are forgiven so we don't carry the guilt and then we want to forgive other people. Then it's all centered around forgiveness and God's love in forgiveness. And then love to treasure people. Treasure people means that to accept that people are very precious. They are very precious. That Jesus said to Peter, when Peter said, Lord, depart from me for I am a sinner. When he saw that Jesus could tell them to put the net uh, on the right side of the, fish, uh, the boat and then they can have a full load of fish, then he knew that this is, uh, at that time he might just knew that Jesus was a prophet or maybe a mess, uh, the Messiah, that he, you know, he said, I'm not good enough to follow you. But Jesus showed his love of acceptance. He said, do not be afraid. I will make you a fisher of men. That you in the future, you will be able to fish people, bring people in the kingdom of God. So Jesus treasure Peter. He treasure him. He sees that he is important. Uh, so we want to treasure people. Now, if I want to talk about treasuring people, then it will be something like this. Uh, the people's problem would be many people don't treasure people. For instance, they don't treasure the spouse, they don't treasure the children, and they could yell at them and hurt the feelings, and they don't uh, treasure the spouse to make them feel loved and happy, and they don't treasure the church members. They don't think that the church members are precious, and they don't treasure themselves, and they think that they are useless. And then God's nature, God's nature is He treasures each person. Each person is precious to Him. No matter how weak we are, how sinful we are, how many problems we have, how uneducated we are, God still treasures us and He wants to raise us to a high level and He can do it. So that is God's nature. And then how can we and, and why don't people treasure other people? And why don't people believe that God treasures them? Now many people don't believe that God treasures them because they say, I'm nobody. I, I cannot do anything for God. I'm not good enough. So God will not like me. So many people think that they're not, they're too unimportant. When we understand that God treasures Peter, who was a sinner,
God treasures Paul, who was persecuting the Christians, but still God treasures him and wants to use his life. So that's how God is. He treasures people. So when we understand that God treasures people, then we say, Lord, I'm important. Now, uh, I, I go back to why people cannot believe that God treasures them because they're not good enough. They think that God is very critical because people are critical. So many people, you know, uh, superimpose people's nature onto God. They think that God is uh, critical. God doesn't accept people. So many people think that God doesn't accept them. So they feel, they always say, I'm not important. God rejects me. So they always say, think that God will reject them. And so we want, uh, so these are the problems of people. Why people cannot, uh, let me show you, I'm, go, I'm using this outline. So people's problem, they don't believe that God treasure them and they don't treasure other people. Okay, we're talking about God's love of treasuring people seeing people as precious and God's nature is he treasure people he accepts people who are very weak and then and then why don't many Christians treasure uh, believe that they are treasured by God because they think that God is like people God is like people to be very critical they think that God is very critical now the Bible does talk about God being critical of people who don't follow God and reject God God points out the sins. But we notice that God always wants to draw them to Him by His love, by His acceptance. And He said, I want to gather you like the hen wants to gather chicks. I want to gather you. So uh, God wants to gather us. God accepts us. Even though He has uh, announced His judgment to people, but He also announces grace to us that He wants to accept us. And so many people think that God is just critical, but God is very loving. And also many Christians have not been treasured by other Christians. They have not been treasured by the spouse, by the pastor, by other Christians. So they don't have this heart of treasuring people, seeing pe each person as very precious. And also people haven't learned how to treasure people, how to do it. These people have a problem, how to do it. So, and then how? to overcome the hindrance and then treasure people and, and believe that God treasure us. Then we read the Bible. The way the how is to read the Bible, to see how God treasures Peter, Zacchaeus, uh, and all the people who follow him, uh, the Christians who are weak, the adulterous woman, the woman with the 12-year bleeding. All these people, Jesus treasure them and he wants to use them. He wants to bless them. So we want to read the Bible and believe that. And then when we praise and worship, we can experience God's acceptance. That God is treasuring us. Then we will believe more and more that God is treasuring us. And, and then also we want to learn to treasure other people uh, by seeing that each person has the potential. So when we hear testimonies of people who are uh, changed by God, so we see that, oh, people can be changed by God. And then uh, when God uh, tre uh, treasure them, uh, then their life is changed. And then challenge to people. Can you believe today that God treasures you? That God really accepts you? And you, we can all accept each other and treasure each other. Okay? So we, when we talk about uh, his, how He treasures people and raise people up to a high level. So this is another Wait, so these are all different ways God loves us. So if we talk about God raise up people to a high level, uh, we go back to this page and then what can we do? Raise people up to a high level. People's problem. People want to compete. Now when a pastor does very well, he wants to be the best pastor in the area. He wants to have the biggest church. He wants to compete instead of saying, I want to raise other pastors up so that they all will grow, so that the whole area will grow and then every church will, every church will grow big. But many pastors don't think like that. They just want the church to be the biggest. 
or Christians who has brought many people to Christ and then they um, they say I, I, I brought most people to Christ in this church and they don't treasure other people this is a competitive spirit competitive spirit they want to compete with other people because they have been stepped down step down by people so they want to compete with people and step on other people so these are people's problem and God's nature God's nature he wants to raise up people he he wants to use people he wants to let people know you are important I can use you I can raise you up to a high level and God will give us the Holy Spirit to teach us and guide us and God will appreciate when we love him and obey him and serve him he's very happy to bless us so God's nature is like that and he also will put it into a heart a heart to accept other people and raise up other people and why do many Christians don't raise up other Christians because they don't want competition they want them uh, themselves to be the best they want to be praised by people or they haven't learned how to do it they haven't learned how to raise up people to a high, le high level and then how can we do that we want to pay it uh, the way is to pay attention to how has God has raised me up how God has raised me up to a high level how God has taught me so I want to be used by God to raise up other people and I see that when I raise up other people God is very happy with me if I give them a cup of cold water God is very happy if I raise them up to a high level God is very happy with me so I want to I want to do it them that give us the motivation because we know that God is very happy when we raise up other people and then how to do it is to appreciate people when whenever they obey God whenever they love God we appreciate people we want to uh, 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 and then we want to raise up people and God is very happy so so we want to appreciate people how they grow and then we and then we say everyone has potential so I want to raise up people and then challenge can we start to see the good things about people about the other Christians about your spouse your family members and try to raise them up to a high level is it very difficult to, to do uh, can we put down our spirit of com competition do we have to compete with other people we don't need to get praises from people we just want to get praises from God okay so we want to narrow down okay just now I demonstrate how to uh, talk about different aspects of God's love and then for Christians you know like evangelism we can uh, this area we can talk about different aspects of evangelism one message could be about the compassion to do evangelism to save people and also another message could be the method of evangelism or uh, the cooperation of Christians how we work together and to be more efficient to, in evangelism another message could be about the experience God evangelism which I have taught how to pray, pray for people to experience the Holy Spirit and another message could be about the joy of evangelism the joy of evangelism that when we see people saved we have joy and then in heaven when we see a crowd of people that we have saved then we can have great joy and great reward from God okay another another uh, aspect of evangelism is uh, when we think about people we have not talked to them about Jesus our failure to do evangelism so this is another approach that if our family members our relatives our friends our neighbors haven't heard the gospel from us and then one day they go to hell when we see that how will we feel and how we change want to change this because God has compassion so I want to change this I don't want to see my neighbors my friends my relatives go to hell because it will happen one day when they will ask us they now it could happen like this or Jesus asked us why didn't you tell your relative or your neighbor about Jesus so God can ask us questions like that so here 
I, I put down here. So when we talk about evangelism, we can talk about the compassion to save people, the willingness to be rejected by non-Christians. This is another area. That even when Christian re uh, non-Christians rejects me, it's fine, it's okay, because God is happy with me. When I do evangelism, even when I'm rejected, God will reward me. God will remember me doing evangelism for, to people and we are rejected, that's fine. Uh, but we, of course, we don't want people to reject us. But we want to continue to do evangelism. And then the boldness to do evangelism, that is another aspect. How to have the boldness, how to overcome fear. Uh, I have overcome fear by saying, uh, God is very happy even when people reject me. God is very happy, happy, I mean happy with me when I do evangelism, even when people reject me. God is still happy with me. And also, this could be the last chance that I see this person. If I don't do it, he might not have a second chance. So I want to do it right now. So that gives us the, uh, the boldness to do evangelism. And also that need to be trained. We need to do, uh, uh, be trained to do evangelism in the public, uh, on the street, on the road that we talk to people about Jesus, people that we come across next to us. We want to talk to them about Jesus. Okay, and then wise ways to do evangelism. What are wise ways and what are ways that are not so wise? Now wise ways would be, for instance, wise ways would be to listen to people more, to respond to their needs, to care about them so that they feel cared for and loved. When people feel loved, then they are more open to listen to our message. And also, uh, wise ways would be to help them experience the Holy Spirit. And also, wise ways would be uh, to, to have sharing about how people are saved and then their problems are changed. And then unwise ways of evangelism is to continue arguing with people or if we are uh, angry or unhappy when people don't believe in Jesus. When we are angry, when people don't accept Jesus, that's very unwise because it will block the way of evangelism in the future. And other unwise ways uh, is to offend people and say, you will go to hell now. We can tell them eventually, but we don't want to start with telling them you don't believe in Jesus, you'll go to hell. We don't want to start with uh, critical ways of talking to them. Okay? And then the urgency of evangelism. And what are the reasons of urgency? Because people could lose their life anytime. There are people who lose their life suddenly and we don't have any chance. Or this is the, the last chance we can see this person. Uh, and also the end of the world is coming. And also when this person is saved, then he can bring other people. So it's urgent that we try to do evangelism as early as possible. If we narrow down to one narrow area, it's easier for people to understand and apply and won't get lost during the delivery. So when we narrow down, then people can understand it better. They can remember it better. They won't be lost, that they will remember what we have talked about. Okay, now, um, after we set a narrow theme, we want to keep talking about this narrow theme in all the parts of the sermon and not to stray away. Now, just now when I demonstrate here, so if we want to talk about boldness of evangelism, people's problem. Many people, they've done evangelism a few times, but then after that, they don't have the boldness anymore. They don't have the courage anymore because people are afraid to be rejected. It's the fear. And God's nature, God is bold. Jesus was bold to talk to people. He talked to strangers, the Samaritan woman. He talked to the people, the disciples, to call them. So Jesus was bold. Even the Pharisees, He was bold to talk to them. That He did not neglect them he want them to be for, uh, to re they want he wants them to repent and follow god 
And then why many Christians don't have boldness? Because many Christians, they just have not developed boldness. They can be bold in earning money, but they are not bold to do evangelism because they think this is optional. They think this is something I can do or not to do. It's up to me. Uh, or people just have the nature of having fear. And how, how can we develop fear? We can, there are ways we practice evangelism with one, uh, one another in the church. We practice evangelism uh, to our friends, our relatives, people whom we know well. And then we practice evangelism to strangers. So, uh, and then we read from the Bible how people are courageous. Okay, now, here, so not to stray away from it, because if we talk about the courage to do evangelism, we want, don't want to stray away from it. We want to keep talking about the courage to do evangelism. Now, this will be an outline here, because a uh, people's problem, because many people, Christians are afraid to do, do evangelism. They miss the chance to save many people. 